Hi guys, let's have a look at how to create a watercolour painting effect in Affinity Photo on the iPad. It can also be done on the desktop of course, but I'm using the iPad because I can. Now the first thing we're going to do is make an embedded image. This is the equivalent of the Photoshop Smart Object. And it's really only an embedded object. So let's take the image we're going to make into an embedded object. Very easy. Open the Venice image in Affinity Photo. There's a link to that in the description. Save it to your file location where you want it as Venice Embed as an A photo file. You've opened it in Affinity Photo, just save it to where you normally save your files and it will save as an A photo type file. We're not going to use the actual image file from here on. Now set up the palette. Open a blank document just using the photo default. It's a good size for a painting after all. You want portrait and transparent. Next, place the image you just created, the A photo file, not the original image file. Note in the layers panel, it's now an embedded file. Resize it as you like, as you need to. Now I've got it a slightly larger than the actual image there, but you can resize that as you like. The great advantage of having an embedded image is that you can add filters in a non-destructive way. You can then swap out the image and the filters remain. I'll show this at the end. So let's proceed. First, select the image and in the Adjustment Studio, select Posterize. Tapping on the icon itself, remember, not the word. Leave the levels at 4, that's the default. This is a number of colours just as in a watercolour image base. And that's all we need to start with. Now the new adjustment layer shows at the top. But make sure you select the embedded image, not the adjustment layer. You want the embedded image. Select the image layer and change its layer blend mode to pin light. Now select the second or top layer, that's the one that's the adjustment one, and set its mode to saturation. <coughs> Reduce the opacity to 50%. You can see you've got saturation selected there. Now reduce its opacity to 50%. Now let's add an effect to our image by selecting the image itself that is the embedded image, then selecting the Filters Studio and turning on the Live Filters switch. Then select Box Blur. It's about the third one down, I think. Now set the radius to 10 pixels. Set the opacity to 50% and your box blur is applied. Next, keeping the adjustment layer selected, set the layer mode to Screen and reduce the opacity to 50%. And you can see that there. Save your work. And you can see if you look carefully, although this is a fairly small image here, it's slowly washing out the colours in the image. Now, we need to detect some edges to sharpen it up a bit. Select Filters. With the blur box with the box blur mask layer selected, you can see the layers selected there, select detect edges. This will immediately darken the edges on the layer. It will also put a dark mask on that adjustment layer. You'll see the mask takes on a black patch the image will take on a slightly outlined look. It also has the effect of smoothing out the poster-like effect, which you don't want. Next, we need to load the paper texture supplied. This is going to give it that um, paper canvas painting look. Locate the paper texture you downloaded. Make sure you are on the top layer and place the texture paper on its own layer. And you can see it there, it's above everything else. 
Now use Transform Studio to scale and rotate the texture so it fits neatly on the canvas. In the Layers Studio, make sure you select the text image. Because you can find yourself with another layer selected and nothing works. Make sure you have the texture image layer selected, then select Filters, Live Filters, select Clarity in Live Filters, and set to 25. Set the clarity is set to 25. It gives it that canvas look. And then set the layer blend mode to multiply. And now you can see your watercolour image beneath the canvas, but in the sky you've got that canvassy painting look. Now we can add a brush effect. If you already have some watercolour brushes, that's fine. Otherwise you might like to download the fantastic set of watercolour brushes available from Design Cuts. The address is in the description below. They work fine in Affinity Photo. Just load them in in the usual way. Now they're only $15 and you, for that you get 150 high resolution stamp brushes, suitable for Photoshop, but of course, they load equally well in Affinity Photo. How lucky are we? With your layers showing as follows, you can see them over there, and the embedded image layer selected, add a fill layer from the tools menu, that's with the plus sign. So if you look at the layers there, Initially, I had the image layer selected, the embedded image. But when you add the plus sign and add a fill layer, it drops it just above the embedded image. Now your fill layer is white, and notice that because it's beneath the texture layer, the texture layer still shows. Now brushes. Next, select a brush. You'll have imported your watercolour blooms brushes. They won't look like this, unfortunately, except for the very small picture in the context toolbar. But these are in order. So the first one you'll see in the list of brushes on your iPad, start at the top left there and work through down to the other ones. You'll have to experiment if you want to find an exact brush. But for now, just observe that you can use any of these. You'll find that the brush names are not really helpful, so you'll have to choose carefully, and they are not numbered like this. These brush shapes only appear in the context toolbar when a brush is selected, then you can see the shape. Okay, select the fill layer. That's the one you just added. That's important, make sure that layer is selected. Select the first brush in the set and set the options to 700, 50, 50 and 50, as shown. Then, starting from the centre of the image, begin stamping, doing at least four stamps, but no more than five, or six. Change to the next brush. I urge you to experiment with these brushes. Take your time with this, you can always go through the undo steps, as they're very detailed. I'm actually going to rename my brushes to those names that are shown. The first four brush stamps. Notice the settings in the context toolbar. This is just the start. The next image shows the development of the image as I proceed a little further. The next four brush stamps. You can see there's a bit more colour coming out. Notice the settings in the context toolbar. The next image shows the development of the image. Notice the settings changing. Now you don't want to put heavy duty settings in there. Don't make it 100% flow and 100% hardness and tiny little brush sizes because it won't look like a watercolour. It'll just look like a splodge of paint as if you've actually made a mistake. Now each successive application giving the impression of the layers of watercolour paint being applied. And you can see as you steadily work out around your painting, there's parts of the buildings and the waterways are appearing. And it's a very watercolour-y type effect. So that's really the end of that process for part one. And you can see the image on the right there. 
Now accept it, recall we are using a smart object, or as we call it, embedded file or embedded object. We can simply replace the embedded image with another one, and you don't lose any of the settings. So select the Move tool, that's the arrow, second from the top on the left there, then the layer with the embedded image, and you can see the layer, embedded image is there, embedded AF photo, that's selected. Double tap on the little image in the icon, the little image icon, and it will bring up your embedded image, the original in fact. Nothing applied to it, that's your embedded image. Now, here's the magic. Let's place an image from the stock studio and deselect the original. So you've still got that open. You've gone to the stock studio and placed a field of flowers on top of the original image. Deselect the original image, which you can see is locked there and called background, and I've placed the flowers on top of it. Next, tap the return arrow, top left there, and it takes you back to your project. And there's your new image in place, and you can see the brushwork applied to it. How nice is that? And you can do that with virtually any image. So that's really the end of our process. And you can see I've got another bunch of flowers there. I hope you find it entertaining and useful. It's a great way to develop artistic skills as well. And thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like. And the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. Clicking the thumbs up for a like helps me count the number of views on my channel. It's really appreciated.